Sorry, Paul. All right, so um, based upon, you know, hearing that story, let's go ahead and close our eyes for a moment and just think about ways in which um, we'll kind of, we'll think of two things. One, first, a situation in which you didn't really do a good job caring for yourself. You overrided your intuition or you, um, you know, just ignored what was really needed for you in the moment to um, be, take care of somebody else or, you know, whatever the situation was. Um, so just take a moment to um, notice that just, and hopefully it's slight and this wasn't a big thing, but, um, you know, just notice that slight little turn of self-betrayal that, um, you know, when you, when you choose to, cho to do something that is not in your best interest, um, and how does that make you feel? You know, what's what's living in the memory of that right now? What's the body sensation? And um, what is the, you know, kind of thought process of, of reflection on self? And then um, let's change to think of a moment in which you didn't ignore those internal signals and you very much took care of yourself um, in whatever situation was, whether you said yes or you said no, um, whether you just unapologetic, unapologetically um, took care of your own needs. Uh, so close your eyes and think about a moment like that. And that perhaps there's some discomfort in it. You know, if you've not been trained to put your own needs first, it can feel uncomfortable to do so. So um, the feeling in your memory state might not necessarily just be about, yeah, like, bravo, I, I did right by myself, which I'm hoping that's part of it too. But it might, you might give yourself mixed messages about that. So just sense into what is needed for you to retrain if you need retraining um, or just train yourself to uh, recognize your needs. That's sometimes even just the first step to recognize your needs. And then to make space for them. It doesn't have to be a selfish thing. You don't always have to choose me over you or um, something of that sort. You can have both and. So in your yoga practice this morning or in your day today, some, some, you know, when you're looking outward toward what the day will most likely hold, um, what is it that you could um, cultivate right now in your practice to help you be self-sustaining, to cultivate uh, an awareness of needs, cultivate a caring for self? And can you give yourself permission to put yourself first? Feel into this moment, kind of drop into your body. Feel your way into your breath. Allow your shoulders to soften and melt. You ready? Place your hands together at your heart and allow this present moment awareness to help you cultivate whatever your intention is. It's 
release your hands and find your way onto your back. All right. So as you stretch out and lengthen, such a beautiful thing to just have the opportunity to care for yourself on your yoga mat. So please make your practice your own. If I stray off in the direction you don't like, then go in your own direction. This is the joy of doing yoga at home is that you can modify everything, change anything you need unapologetically. You don't have to feel awkward about doing something different or something unique that serves you best. All right, so let's reach if you want to, arms overhead and feel a little bit of that climbing sensation where your shoulders and your hips start to find their way into a little bit of movement. I like this feeling a lot because that little tiny back bend that lives in the thoracic spine is like a, a little wake up for the body. It's like a little engine that just got turned on to have this sense of, um, your spine feeling in this way. What does it do for you? And then draw your knees up. Put your feet on the ground for a moment, arms down at your sides, and just find yourself resting in that neutral position. And let's go ahead and windshield wiper your knees left and right so you feel a sense of just gentle, what it feels like to move your hips. And take your right knee into your chest. Keep your left foot on the floor and just kind of assess how your back is handling that little bit of compression. Take a deep breath in. And if it's okay, draw your chin toward your chest and just feel a little bit more of that opening in the back body. And then release your head down and go ahead and stretch your left leg on the ground. Move your feet like we usually do. Such a good idea to welcome some mobility into your feet in the beginning of your practice. Just like that back bend feeling in the mid back might give you a, a bit of a wake up, a bit of an engine, you know, turning on, it's like pulling the cord on the lawnmower. Maybe your feet have some um, capacity to uh, enliven your body as well, to bring your awareness, your sensing tools down all the way into your feet. Okay, let's switch left knee into your chest, right leg long on the ground. Feel into that uh, sense of movement of your feet still. Good compression of your knee and your hip. Let your head get heavy and relax. And when you're ready, go ahead and bend your right knee, put it on the ground, take a deep breath in. As you exhale, just round in one knee, round in. See how your back is feeling there. And then release that and open up to a star, stretching big and wide on the ground, maybe rolling your wrists, opening and closing your fists, wiggling your toes, full body pose. Can you feel, take up lots of space, try to grow in your expansiveness. And then when your next exhale arrives, knees into your chest, keep your head down for a moment. Relax and rock your knees left and right. And circle our knees kind of rolling in one direction. Try to let this just be a little loosening for the back for the sacrum. Switch sides. And touch your knees, cross your back. And then open your knees away from the middle and bring them back in. All right, now hang out with your knees out there wide. So just take your knees as far apart from each other as they will go. And little tiny movements of bringing your knees a little bit towards your chest and a little bit away from your chest while they're still out there. So you just kind of get into that end point of range in your hip joints. and then bring your knees back in. Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, round your spine, chin, chin toward your chest, knees in, open up the back. Inhale, starfish your body, reaching outward. Exhale, drawing it in. Put your feet on the ground, arms out to the sides, and let's windshield wiper our knees again. 
Coming into a deeper twist when you feel ready. We're going to lift our hips and scooch them to the right. Bring your knees up and drop them over to the left. Hang on to the outer right knee if it's comfy. And let's do some movement of our arms. So as your arm comes sliding on the ground up over your head, turn your head and then go ahead and release your arm down at your side. So typically it's a little more comfortable for most people's necks to turn your head to the left when your arm comes down and then turn your head to the right as your arm comes up. But maybe explore and see if your neck wants something different. So sometimes the only way to know if something feels good or not in your body is to try it. When you're ready, stretch out big and wide again on the ground. Exhale, draw your knees into your chest, head comes up. And then put your feet on the ground, lift your hips, scoot them to the left. Knees drop over to the right, twisting open here. Find breath. All right, and then maybe start to slide your hand like a snow angel on the ground. Decide, you know, where you want to turn your head. Maybe you want to turn your head the opposite of what I said. So it doesn't really matter. Just see what feels good to you. Remember in our yoga practice, we're constantly trying to follow principles of movement instead of rules of movement. So rules might be something like you must turn your head this way when you lift your arm up and you must turn your head that way when you lift your arm down. A principle is do I feel stable? Do, do my joint spaces feel open and available? Am I able to breathe? Is there any restriction happening in the movement pattern I'm creating? Start to know yourself so that you don't have to rely on a different body, somebody else, me or anybody else, who has a different body than you, telling you what's right or wrong for your body. So if you can follow principles of stability, um, you know, where our joints are supporting each other, where we feel able to breathe and safe in our bodies, then who's to say that that's a quote unquote wrong choice for a pose? Okay, so listen to self way more. Take everything you've learned from others and adapt them into your body. Let's roll over onto your side and come up onto your hands and your knees. And I think this is one of um, the gifts that I've experienced in a long-term yoga practice. You know, when for the first, I don't know how long of my yoga practice, it was a Simon Says kind of practice. My teacher said, do this, I did that. Um, my teacher said, don't do this, I didn't do that. Okay, but sometime along the way, you have to start developing a deep intuition about self, because let's move through some cacaos, um, because most of the yoga practices that we've been taught, although very sound, are, um, first of all, geared towards men's bodies originally, um, you know, from the tra ancient traditional traditions in India. Um, and even if they were morphed, like, you know, um, the luminaries in the yoga practice, like Gita, Iyengar, even if they were morphed toward women's bodies, it's still not your body. So um, what's needed today? Start moving and swaying in your cat cows in a way that feels really good. And then add any other movements that your body likes. Okay, learn that your spine has capacity to move in lots of different directions. So see if you can feel the combo pack, you know, that you're not just moving in one plane, but um, we have this dynamic ability to be multi-planar in our spine. What a beautiful thing. Imagine if our vertebrae were just hinge joints and all we could do is flex and extend. We wouldn't have very nice dance moves, would we? So, you know, just imagine um, what uh, your spine is capable of. And then walk back towards child's pose. 
and see what it feels like to have a big opening in the back of your body. Feel your hips drop down and toward your heels and stretch your shoulders long. Deep breath, assess here. What are you feeling? What part of your body is talking a little bit more loudly than another part of your body? Is there anything that you're noticing that you need to tend to in your practice? How are you gonna go about that? All right, come back up, up onto all fours. Let's find a twist, okay? So reaching the left arm up in the air, exhale and slide that arm under, gazing toward the ground, twisting open, allowing your shoulders to soften and ease and allow the base of the skull to relax. When you let your practice become an inquiry-based practice instead of a purposeful, productive, like moving towards something. Uh, let, the, let the purpose of your practice be about inquiry. Now, reach the arm all the way up in the air. Place that hand down onto the ground and let's switch sides. Arm up, exhale, slide that arm underneath. Every posture we take is an opportunity to have autonomy and care for yourself. Like you manipulate your body in a position just right for this moment as best as you can. Breathe deeply. Check in with your neck. What can you do to soften? Relax. Lift that arm back up in the air. Hand comes down onto the ground. We're going to take both arms through, so thread two needles now and come down towards child's pose with your needles thread. And just notice, for some people this feels like nothing, for other people this feels like a whole lot. So just notice what your body's sensing. All right, come up onto our shins, reach those arms up in the air. And then exhale, thread your needles the other way, other arm on top. Drop your hips to wherever they go. Wide collarbones. And inhale, reach the arms up one more time onto your shins. Exhale, hands coming down onto the ground. Curl your toes under and lift to dog pose. So let's pedal your feet here. Drop one heel, drop the other heel if you want. You know, sometimes movement is a very good thing. In the beginning of yoga practice, our muscles and our tendons and ligaments, you know, the movement, the friction of movement, it's a very nice way of getting those tissues to warm and open versus a static hold right in the beginning. And when you are ready for a little more um, stillness, feel your way into your hands and your feet. Drop some deep roots. Imagine that you're sinking toward and deep into the earth. And then rebound from that place where your body gets space. Relax your skull. Notice if your weight bearing tends to go in your outer feet or outer hands. See if you can balance across the sweep of your toes and the sweep of your hands. And then walk your feet forward, come to Uttanasana. Holding deeply, let your knees bend. Find your breath. Shake your hips, shake your shoulders, whatever it is that you need. Again, movement sometimes can be nice. Inhale for a halfway lift while we're here, and you can have your hands on the ground or on your legs. But um, I would I would say for this movement, you might want your hands on something instead of your legs. All right, we're going to bend one knee and drop the other heel, and then bend one knee and drop the other heel. Let your hips come offline from each other. So we're just having a little bit of movement. This is why I like to have my hands on blocks for this. So there's just a little bit of uh, capacity to move your pelvis around in this position. 
How does it get unlocked? You know, where your hips can do different things. All right, and then feel into this steady halfway lift. Open up your feet all the way to your sit bones. And then exhale and melt again. Knees can bend a lot. Push off your feet, coming all the way up to stand, reaching the arms up in the air, feeling that extension. Let's open our cactus nice and wide in our chest and feel the back body. And then press your hands straight out. Spread your fingers wide, fingertips up. Let's do some circles here with your arms. See if you can feel those nerve glides that are just kind of finding their passageways through all the tissues in your arms and shoulders. Maybe a little bit bigger circles if it feels nice. I didn't say whether to do backwards or forward circles, so whatever you're doing, switch. Just feeling your shoulders kind of find some strength. Keep the shoulder blades down, keep you the base of your skull as loose as you can. Smaller circles again. Press your palms up, spread your palms wide, and then reach your arms up, interlace your fingers, and press your palms toward the sky. Take a deep breath in. Root through your feet. You can get a little wider in your stance if you need to, up and over to one side. Feel the dropping of your foot. How's your breath? Come back up, over to the other side. Breathing deeply. Open up cactus arms one more time and then relax and give your arms a good shake. Okay, shake out your hands, your wrists, your arms. Find your breath. Take your feet a little wider than hip width or hip width, whatever is working for you. And let's just twist. Now, um, we're gonna do, make sure you have lots of room and turn sideways on your mat. So we're gonna turn this into some wide-legged stance in a moment. But first, just beginning here, just letting your core turn on. So try to find that churning where your belly's kind of turning in opposition of your shoulders for a minute. So you can feel your obliques kind of turn on. How's your breath? Nice movements to just loosen up your spine. Okay. All right, and from here, we're gonna start to move our arms differently. Okay, so arms out. And this time, instead of letting your belly kind of turn in the opposite direction, now we're gonna turn our belly in the same direction as our arms. Lift your back heel up. So you can really twist your pelvis along with your spine. Breathing deeply. Core is engaged, so we're kind of supporting ourselves. Now arms up. And this is where our legs are going to start getting involved. Okay, Squatting, lifting. You can move fast or slow. We're going to eventually just start taking our legs wider on the mat. We're still coming down and then up. Down into a squat and up, fast, slow, wide, not so wide, you're choosing. And now take nice wide legs, and we're going to keep our torso kind of upright, swooping from one side to the other. Imagine you are wiping down a really wide table with a rat, and you have to kind of reach to a long space. How's your breathing? And then now a little low. All right, so let your spine get kind of seaweedy. Coming into squats, getting your legs to get involved. All right, and then find stillness in a deep, low squat. Elbows inside your knees. Find your breath. Spread out the bones of your feet. Feel into the movement here. Root down. Stand all the way up. Standing star. If you're dizzy, you know what to do. Take yourself to the midline. Finding your breath. Full deep inhales. Full long exhales. Take up a lot of space. When's the last time you just kind of stayed like this for a while? Okay. 
your arms down. A wide stance. I'm going to turn our right foot out. Take a deep breath. Come into Karjal Konasana. Elbow on your knee. Stretch your arm overhead and feel that beautiful length in your body. Root down through your back heel. Open up. Finding that side body gets free. Root into both feet well. Big breaths here. Back up. And we'll do the same pose to the second side. Take a deep breath in. Bend your knee. Elbow on your knee. Stretch your arm overhead. Come into your grounding. Notice <clears throat> this side might feel different than the other side. Pay attention to how your body responds to different movement patterns. Can you relax your palms and soften your neck? Is there an ease through your face, your eyes? Can you feel the ground with your feet and move in? Back to neutral, back to the first side, ping pong through some of these standing poses, arms come up, deep breath in, Virabhadrasana two. So drop some energy down into your legs and into your feet again, root through the ground, soften your shoulders, stretch from your heart to your fingertips, get long and wide, breathing well. Feel how broad this pose is, how wide open your body is, how you take up a lot of space. Unapologetically, you take up a lot of space. And then we'll reverse this warrior to reach through that side body, lengthen through your leg now, and find your way into triangle pose. Hand can come on a block or on your leg if you'd like. Drop some energy down into your back heel as you open up through your spine. Maybe your head turns to look up at the sky. Maybe your neck doesn't like that. And find that you're unlocked in your joints, all the way from your you know, toes on up. Are you scrunching your toes? Can you spread your feet? Can you root your feet? Can you feel that your ankles are you know, neutral, that you're not pushing, especially in your left leg, don't push your ankle out. See what it feels like to integrate. Unlock your knees, feel the mobility in your pelvis, your spine. And come all the way back up again. We'll come to the second side, Virabhadrasana. So arms up to begin if you'd like. Take a deep breath in and find your way into this posture. Relax the shoulders down. So if you tend to get, you know, upper traps, Get really hingy up toward your ears here. What can you do to just melt? Imagine that your hands are being lifted up on strings. So the energy comes not from your neck, but from the strength of your, your deltoids and your arms to lift your arms up, not just from your traps. Root into your feet well. Feel that broadening of your body. You're taking up lots of room. Full breaths here. See if you can color in the whole body and are you feeling everywhere? Is there any, you know, little area of the body that's a little absent from that energetic lift? Reverse your warrior, open up through your ribs, find that space, find your strength, push into the ground. And as you're ready, straighten your leg and find triangle pose. When we come into a posture that has straight legs, it's very easy to lock joints. So feel the softness of the soles of your feet root. See if you can feel the toes ground. The ankles are stabilized. The knees are unlocked. You have the ability to shift your hips and move your pelvis. Your tail has space within the pelvic joints. You know, within the pelvic bones, your sacrum can slide toward the back or not toward your hip, but you know, in the in the direction away from your crown.
the way back up. Turn your feet straight or a little bit turned out, whatever feels good. Again, standing star. Find your breath. Exhale, bend your knees, hands on the ground, a deep squat. From here, turn toward the front of your mat, adjust your hands and your feet, and come into dog pose. Now notice this pose might feel very different than the first time we did it. So notice how your body just slowly warms and opens in your practice. Let's drop weight into our hands and feet. Feel that spreading across the bones. Feel your breath here. Take advantage of all the room to breathe well. Let your head be melting. Come forward into a plank. Hold yourself steady on. Feel that integration of your core. Shoulders away from the ears, inner thighs, a little lift. Stretch your heels. And let's find the ground. Belly down, breathing deeply. Couple shoulder rolls, inhale to come up to a cobra when you are ready. And exhale to melt back down. Let's repeat again. Inhale, let your spine lift. Notice if it's a little easier to be in cobra pose, not having done it for, you know, a little deeper into our practice. Come up on tall fours, move your spine around, wag your tail, and then come towards child's pose. Feel that compression in your knees, relax your head. A full breath. Come up onto your knees again. We're gonna come into Vasisthasana. Take your right hand on the mat. You can always do a forearm instead if you want. I'm gonna take the variation with the knee down, but you can take two feet on the ground if you'd like, instead of, or you know, one, your left foot stacked on top of your right foot. Shoulders away from the ears, lift on up. If your knee's down, and even if your feet are stacked, perhaps lift your leg up. Open your breath, start to turn on some of those outer hip muscles. And then lower your body back down. Child's pose, shake out your wrists. And then we'll move over to the second side. Left hand on the ground, maybe left knee on the ground, maybe right foot on the ground. Perhaps you're stacking your right foot on top of your left foot and your legs are straight. Your choice and how you do this pose. You can also do the version where your foot is straight and your top leg is on the ground like this. Okay, so protect your shoulders if you need protection. Shoulders down, open your chest, find your breath. No matter what position you're doing, try lifting your leg up. It doesn't have, you could be low. You could just be an inch off the ground, but stabilize through your core. Press your shin into the ground if your other leg is down. Find your breath. And exhale and release that child's pose. This time, maybe your arms want to come down at your sides instead of over your head. So your choice. Breathing deeply. You're ready, lift up to a dog pose. Taking your time, breathing well, feeling that open, open spine. Maybe you want to take your legs a little wider. Just see what feels good in your back, good in your legs, good in your breath. Walk your feet forward, come to Uttanasana again. Inhale for a halfway lift. Opening the backs of your legs. Exhale, holding down. Rising all the way up, bringing the arms to the sky. And then trace down through the center line. Just feel your way into a sense of balance. Enjoy you know, how much uh, ease of it we have in balancing here in this pose. Two feet on the ground, our hands are close in. 
Feel yourself breathe deeply. Unlock your knees. Let your breath travel into your belly. A long, steady exhale. Notice the calming effect of your breath. Just release your hands. And go ahead and give them a little shake. We're going to come into Ardha Chandrasana, Half Moon Pose. Um, we haven't done much to, uh, let's do this first, just to get used to balancing on one foot. So stand in Tadasana, and we're going to just tip over onto our right foot and lift open to a standing tipped star. Feel those hip muscles engage, your glutes, your, ham your hamstrings, your core, everything's finding some strength here. back to center, palms together. Notice the ease of balance. And as we come over to the other side, soft gaze, stabilizing your muscles, relax your neck, breathe. Let your gaze land on something that helps you with balance. And then come back. Maybe a little wiggle in your body. Maybe a little bounce in your body. Uh, okay, just like that, release. And as we come into Ardha Chandrasana now, remember you can always do this pose against a wall. You can put your foot up on something. There's lots of ways to support you if balance is tricky for you today. Okay. Um, I can never do this pose well in this space if I'm facing you um, because of my furniture. So I'm taking a, a very narrow stance but you can take like a wide triangle or Parjvokanasana to get into this posture. Keep your right foot pointing straight toward the short edge of your mat. So we're not turning our foot in or out. As we come into this pose, we're gonna hop up onto your foot and find your way. I think hand on a block can be very helpful so that you're not tipped downward and your spine has a lot more room in this pose. Reach your crown and your foot away from each other. Unlock your standing knee. Feed breath into your body and let it out. Try to open your chest and open your hip to the best that of your ability. Gaze is something that does not move. So you can turn your head to the sky, you can look down at the ground, you can look forward. And then a big giant step back out the same way you went in. Find your breath, maybe stand in Tadasana in between your two sides to just not only kind of get your bearings of, of balance, but to appreciate the ease of standing on two feet. Okay, and let's find our way to the second side. Our left foot is pointing straight toward the short edge of our mat, not turned in, not turned out, nice and neutral. Hop up onto your left foot. You can have your hand on a block, and if you know you struggle with balance, try taking the, um, the hand on a block. Instead of having it be in line with your foot, take it a little out to the left, and this will give you a little broader base of support. Open up through your chest. Lift that leg. Engage your core. Move your tail toward your foot, your foot away from your crown, your crown away from your foot. Open across your chest. Feel the whole um, sole of your foot. Unlock your knee. Lots of breaths here. It's so easy to hold your breath. See if you can keep it moving. And then a big giant step back out the way you came. And again, standing for a moment to just feel the ease of balance. And if you feel like moving, if you want to swish or bounce um, or you know bend forward, just kind of find what's going to help you release the posture. Full breaths in, full breath away. Come to the front of your mat and we'll do a little bit of a vinyasa. Inhale, arms coming up. Exhale, floating forward. Inhale, halfway lift, melt and fold. 
Step your left foot back, come to a lunge. Extending through your spine. Exhale, straighten your front leg, bow your head. Inhale, come forward into a lunge again. When you're ready, feel your roots on your next breath in, rise up, crescent lunge. Opening up to the sky. Let's maybe cactus our arms or stretch them out or interlace them behind you, whatever you want to do. And then release your hands down onto the blocks, hands onto the ground, really. And then step your front foot back. Bob pose, feeling that extension in your spine, breathing well. Come forward. Full breaths here. Lower yourself down to the ground on your exhale. Inhale, cobra pose. Exhale, and now Coming up on tall fours, have a moment to release your spine. You can choose to bring your other foot forward here or lift up into dog pose. Find your breath, other foot in front. Feel the heart open. Extend through that leg. When you exhale or your inhale, you decide. Relax and open up the back of your leg. Straighten your front leg. Bend into your knee again. Ground yourself on your next breath in, perhaps. See if the breath gives you something. So, you know, it's sometimes um, if I cue the breath, it's a suggestion always. But sometimes that inhale gives us the oomph to rise. Sometimes the exhale gives us the opportunity to surrender so we can use our breath to help us along the way. Any position with your arms that you want. Find breathing. Exhale, hands back down, dog pose again. Extending through the spine, finding your breath. Walk your feet forward when you feel ready. There's no rush if you love dog pose, hang out. Inhale for a halfway lift, melting and folding, head is released, rising up, arms to the sky, trace down through that center line again, pause here, samastitihi, feel your hands touch each other, relax your shoulders, your hands down. Helga, come on to our, onto the ground. Um, <clears throat> sit on the edge of a blanket if you're comfy with the, with a blanket. You know, I think it helps in four bends because it tips your pelvis a little bit, which is a good thing. First, take the soles of your feet together. Okay, have your heels close in, lift up through your spine, open across your collarbones. Find your breath. And then if you'd like, you can lean forward a little bit here, always checking out your spine and making sure it's happy with what you're choosing to do. And then perhaps you can bring your feet a little farther away from your pelvis so you form a diamond shape between your knees. And that same, let's lift up, feel the space, come forward without collapse. Perhaps your elbows want to press down your knees a little bit to kind of get into the hips. Maybe you'd rather just have your hands on the ground. And maybe you'd rather have your hands behind you. Lots of choices, long spine. So try to keep that principle of the spaciousness of your spine alive. Bowing your head if you'd like. All right, come back up. Take your right foot straight out. You have a choice here of which way you twist. You can either open twist where you take your left elbow on the inside of your left knee and twist this way or you can cross your leg over and wrap your right arm around your knee, left hand behind you, and twist this way. 
Lots of choices, always lots of choices. Your straight leg, have it point straight up if you can, instead of falling out to the side so there's a little activity. Draw your femur bone down, feel the spine lift. Come back to center. And whichever side, whichever twist you did, let's repeat it on the other side. So either coming into an open twist with your arm on the inside edge of your right knee, left hand behind you, or crossing that right leg over your left, wrapping your left arm around your knee, or you can even bring your elbow to the outer knee. So lots of ways to make the, the pose deeper or less deep. Finding the twist in your body. How's your breath? Background to center. Take two legs straight out. Now, again, here's a choice. Maybe you want to do Paschimottanasana with a strap around your feet. Maybe um, you'd rather do this with some bent knees. Maybe you'd rather do Janu Shashasana with one leg bent and the other leg straight. Okay, so choose a pathway. If you're doing a pose, a four bend that has two sides, just be mindful that you need to switch sides. So I think it's helpful to kind of get on the flesh, get the flesh of your buttocks out of the way, feel your sit bones on that blanket so you know that you're in that slight anterior tilt. This will protect your lumbar spine a little bit more. Drop your weight into your legs. You can have your legs wider apart. They don't have to be together. Feel into the lift of your spine and the forward movement. So think less about down and more about long. And so you, if you feel the desire to have those paraspinal muscles stretch, first feel the length of your spine and drop your chin to get those paraspinal muscles to open without compressing, without compressing the spine. If you're on two sides, make sure you do the other side, breathing well. Sometimes I do this pose with pushing my hands right at the roots of my thighs get that decompression in my low back a little bit more. Out of the pose, if you're doing the second side and need a little longer, then go do that. We're all gonna come down onto our back when you're ready, moving in the opposite direction with a passive pose. So block underneath your pelvis, and um, you can just be in neutral for a moment before putting the block under your pelvis. Sometimes just laying on your back with your knees bent feet on the floor is enough to neutralize the spine after a twist and four bend. But if you need a little height underneath, then when you're ready, you can put a block under your pelvis. Breathe here. Let your body melt. You can also do this on the um, MR release ball that I think all of you have. It doesn't always have to be a heart service. Sometimes doing this on a, on a ball can be very soothing. And we're gonna to transition towards Shavasana. And you have um, so many choices of how you do that. You know, maybe you want to bring your legs up for a moment. Maybe you want to get off that block and do a, just a little bit of happy baby or a twist or whatever you your body wants. Okay, so choose your pathway. Maybe nothing. You just get that block out of there and lie down. Okay, but if there's anything, if, we're, if you're paying attention and noticing your needs, if there's a need, follow. So such a great thing about our yoga practice is this ability to get to know our needs. Uh, if you've not been trained in your life to put yourself, your needs first, sometimes it's hard to even notice what those needs are. So use your yoga practice to um, become deeply self-aware as much as you can. Okay, let's go ahead and 
lie down in any way that you want when you're ready. You could be doing something else still, and that's great. But whenever you're ready for Shavasana, take any support that you need. Allow your body to rest. Feel into the heaviness of your legs, the heaviness of your head. Deepen the breath. Any breaks that your body needs to do to find its way out of Shavasana. Find your way to your side. Find your way slowly up to a comfortable seat. So there's no rush. Sure, right, just notice any gifts of your practice, just the embodiment alone, presence. Let's bring our palms together. For your energy, send your care. When we are filled up with our own cup, we have so much more to give. Caring for self is caring for others. Namaste. Thank you, everyone.